I want to title this message with this word. If you have got the theme there. The omnipotence of God. The very simple definition of omnipotence of God, it simply means my God is all powerful. I want that thought to sink in. Because sometimes we have a way of using words without understanding it fully. And we say God is all powerful, God is omnipotent and all that. But I want that to sink in and capture the practical areas of your life. What does that mean? How does that affect my life? How will that affect my prayer life? And how do I seek God in the context of this revelation? So I want you to keep that in mind. Please do not dismiss such a great truth because this is one of the foundational truths regarding our God is all powerful. Now let me ask you, you know, before hearing my message, how many of you know in your heart that my God is all powerful? Amen. Come on, church. I want to repeat that word, meaning all powerful. Did you hear that? All powerful. I want you to hear yourself when you say that, all powerful. Now, I want to extract that theology and put it into two expressions in the Bible. That's all what I want to do today. I want to extract that theology and put it into two expressions found in the Bible. And the first expression that I want to bring before you is this expression. It's found at least three times in the Bible. I want to bring that expression to you. It's called anything too hard. So if you know that complete expression, it is, is anything too hard for the Lord. Now that is the, I think, most simplistic or simpler, you know, connection that we can have with this mighty omnipotence knowledge of God. Simply meaning there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Are you with me? Now I want to go dig deeper. Can we come to the first time this is found? There's only three times there are many Similar passages in the Bible, when God talks to, or angel talks to Mary, he says, nothing is impossible with the Lord. And, and, and then Jesus himself said, nothing is impossible with God. But that's not where I'm going. I'm only going to go with this phrase, is anything too hard for the Lord? It's more like a question. So I want to bring to your attention the first time this is used in Genesis chapter number 18 and verse number 14. And I want to bring some very profound truth alongside Genesis 18, 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? This is God speaking to Abraham. Why did he say that? Can we read maybe from verse number 12? So Sarah laughed to herself. Now she's a mother of faith. Saying, after I'm worn out, and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? And say, shall I indeed bear a child? Now that I am old, is anything too hard for the Lord? I want everybody to get this into your, into your heart, into your spirit. Is anything, this is God speaking. The omnipotence of God expressed in this language. At this appointed time, I will return to you about this time next year, Sarah shall have a son. I want to bring two important you know, concepts over here. This is the revelatory part of it. Why did Sarah say such a statement? She is a woman of faith. She has seen God move. She has walked with the father of faith, Abraham. And why would Sarah say such a thing? And the promise of God has been resounding in, a, in their ears. It's not that God sent a prophet to prophesy over them. God himself spoke to them in mighty, thunderous kind of uh, a way he spoke. 
yet she is not able to accept it. Now, I don't want anybody to feel holier than thou or more faith than the next person sitting beside you. If Sarah can have it or can go through it, none of us are insulated from that kind of a sentiment. We need to understand it's not the lack of promise. There is abundance of promise given by God himself. It's not that they don't know God. For the last 25 years, they have been walking with God. It's not that they have not seen victories in the past. They have seen some extraordinary victories, yet they find it difficult to comprehend that God can do it at this time. Maybe that was not what it was a few years back. They were excited when God spoke. But now the situation has come to a point it's gone from excitement to a glaring sense of reality. I want everybody to understand this afternoon, even people watching me, please do not consider faith to be something that you attach to yourself as an extra fitting. It is very organic, meaning it flows from your heart. There are times you will feel absolutely worn out. So I asked the Lord, why? So God is now saying through this expression, I want you to know I'm omnipotent. I'm all powerful. That's God's answer. So what was troubling her? Two things were troubling her as from a human perspective. Number one, what I call matter. A body has become dead. Now, 25 years, she didn't think so. But right now, she knows the condition of her body. She is finding herself in a place of absolute you know, discouragement. And the fact that the reality of her body is now you know, glaring at her with such sense of overwhelming you know, you know, power. And she didn't know how to react to it because she knows her body. So matter or organs in her body is almost given up. Now, I want you, that's what I said at the beginning, please do not attach this message to any prayer. Seek the Lord as to where you need to fit this message. Come on, church. You will know it in the days to come. So that's number one. Number two, to complicate it, she finds that time is against her. So matter and time is against her. She's giving a sense of the seasons are over. The seasons of relationship is over. Season of childbearing is over. She even made a statement, seasons of pleasure is over. Everything is over. That's what she said. So time is against her and matter is deteriorating inside her. Now, at that point of time, the Lord is making a statement, is anything too hard? for the Lord, which means is declaring my God is a God over matter and is a God over time. I want everybody who believes my God, when he says omnipotent, he is a God over matter and is a God over time. Only such people can you make a sound in the house of the Lord. He is God over. That's what he's saying. Now, I want you to follow me, please. So this is God's response. That's all what he said. Now, please understand this. You know, as Sarah is saying this, you know, she is speaking about seasons are over. There are some people over here who believes that your season is over. But I am here to declare that God is declaring, I am rescheduling your season. I am restoring your season. And I'm also restoring things inside of you in the name of Jesus. If anybody believes your God is an omnipotent God, can you give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord? He is omnipotent God. Now, please, that's called a miracle. Now, what is the angel saying? If you observe what the angel or the Lord is saying, I want you to read that once again. So I'm going to release a principle here and then go to the next point. The principle, please listen. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you about this, this time next year. The emphasis is on time. 
you will have a son. So that is the matter. And the Lord told me this afternoon, just like what I said two weeks back, circumstance will respond to time. The Lord told me very clearly, tell my people, time proceeds matter. Time comes first. In the beginning, that is time. God created. That is matter. That means when you enter God's timing, you don't have to worry about matter. Everything that needs to be created, change, come on in your body, in your life, God can do that. And I'm here to declare some of you are entering the season of God, the timing of God. If you believe that, can you shout? Come on. I'm holding myself back, but I'm going to give you just a chance. If you believe that once you enter the timing of God, creation becomes easy. Healing can happen. Matter can change. Things can evolve. All it takes is you to enter the season of God and then everything that needs to happen in your body will happen in your body. Everything that needs to change will change. If you believe that, can you make a joyful noise in the house? And I believe it with all of my heart. When you enter the season, so God is telling Sarah, you don't even have to worry about matter. All you need to know when you enter the appointed time of life, when you enter the season that I've created for you, you don't have to worry about things changing in your body. Your kidney will say yes to time. Your womb will say yes to time. Your organs will say yes to time. And I'm here to say this church is entering the timing of God, the season of God, where matter will start to change. So in the beginning, time was first that came out. Time proceeded and matter came afterwards. I believe there are two or three passages. Is it Galatians 4.4? 4? In the fullness of time. Can you read please? Galatians. Yeah. Can you read please? Galatians 4.4 4 and Mark 10.6. When the fullness of time came, then God sent matter is now coming. So God is not, God can just say a word, it will be created. But, but first time has to be released. When time is released, God says, I will send matter. Even if it takes a miracle, I will send from out of nothing. I will create it. And I'm here to say, some of you get ready, your healing season is about to begin. Can you... Your healing season. Now I want you to know, Jesus repeated that in Mark 10, 6. Please, Mark 10, 6. The same concept. So from the beginning of creation, that's time, God made them male and female. That means time is a platform on which matter is created. So can you start praising God for the timing more than the matter? Or oh, you didn't hear that. I said, can you start praising God for the seasons of God, for the timing of God, because everything else that needs to happen in your body, in your system, my God is able to do it. If you believe that. Come on, church. I believe that. So I want you to take this in prayer as the Lord would lead your prayer life in the days to come. It's the omnipotence of God in terms of time and matter. Why, is, why did God create time? I want to become philosophical, but I don't know if that's necessary now. 
But I'll give you one reason. You know, matter denotes change. Because you see, you, you're not what you used to be 10 years back. Now that's, uh, I should have used another example. Matter denotes change. And change can only be measured against time. So God had to create time in order for matter to be measured. Another thing, even for miracle to happen, because miracle stands on the, on the principle called cause and effect. So anything that, you know, has a cause will have to have an effect. And that effect is created against time. So that's the reason Moses would say, when I leave this place, when I go out of this palace, this miracle will happen. Tomorrow by this time, this miracle will happen. So God is telling somebody, I created time for you. I created the Kairos moment for you, meaning the right time of God acting in order to show you some miracles. Can I get somebody? That means some of the things that God had spoken over you, it's going to take effect. Oh, somebody help me over here. I'm declaring that once again, some of the promises that God had spoken over you, because of God creating time, you're going to see the effect of it. And get ready, this is the season for God to do things in your life. Can I get somebody put your hands together, give a lot of praise. Hey, hallelujah. I feel like oh, I feel like preaching. You know, so much for conversational preaching. Let me continue. So I'm going to say something which is personal. Are you ready? You don't have to join me. Believe me, you don't have to join me. But I'm going to put the omnipotence of God on a standard. Because I, I, I see, my life is all about, I want to see my God is greater than other gods. That's why I'm living. That's why I'm existing. I want the world to know that my God is the greatest. So his standard is greatest. Come on. I don't have to lower the standard for my God. You keep the highest standard. Like what I said last Sunday, the Lord used the midday sun in order to shine a light around Paul. Meaning let the sun be at the maximum, I can beat it. That's my God. So is anybody... You know, in a recently, I remember, not recently, a few years back, I removed the word revival from, our, from my bylaw, from my church's, you know, was it constitution or an AGM meeting? Because people tend to use the word revival without knowing what it is. They, they just speak it out. So I gave a new definition for revival. I said, I want to make my God known. To me, that's revival. When people know your God is. I want to make my God renowned. Is anybody who want to say, when my God does something, he will do it according to his standard? Amen. So what is my standard when it comes to healing? You know, God can heal anybody in any way. That's his prerogative. But at least for me, I want to keep this a standard. Maybe some, one of you will take this. Maybe some of you will start praying for it. My standard for healing are found in two passages in the Bible. I'm going to apply for that personally. Because that's my God. Is anything too? You know the word hard there is not in the Hebrew. Is anything too hard? The word is pala, which is, is anything too wonderful for your God? Meaning when you say, ooh, too wonderful. God says, that's fine. That's normal. Oh, come on. Wow, that's extraordinary. God says, no. Is anything too wonderful? It is too wonderful for you, but nothing for him. Because he himself is the author of wonder. Everything he does is wonder. Come on. You may say, wow. God doesn't say. He just walks away. Come on. Hallelujah. That's my God. Can you give this God 
my God of praise. You can do better. You can do better. That's my God. So let me release the standard of healing because I said when the time comes, matter will start to respond, including matter that is not there will be created like in the case of Mary. The fullness of time he created. That's my God. So I wanted to get this, time precedes matter. So let me come to what is my definition of God's standard healing. It's found in the first miracle that the church did. And if anybody, I sense this is a release into the atmosphere. If anybody wants to join me for the future, for such kind of healings to happen, I'm going to give you. Don't ever blame me for not giving you an opportunity. Okay? So if anybody is a lawyer here, I've made my case clear. I'm giving an opportunity to seize this moment. There will be healings that will have this standard. And some of you will be used in that gifting. I want to see some people having an appetite for this. A real appetite. Get ready, get, what's that? Yes, get ready, get ready. So what is my standard? Acts 3.16, the first miracle of the church. Acts 3.16. No, 3.16, Acts 3.16. I'm releasing this into the, into the atmosphere. And his name, by faith in his name, has this man whom you see and know that his faith through Jesus Christ gave this man Do you believe the name of Jesus can give perfect health to people? Oh, you didn't hear that. Some of you sign up for this ministry by making a statement, perfect health. Oh, you didn't hear that. Perfect health in the name of Jesus. I'm signing. This is my God. This is my God. This is my God. This is the name of Jesus. Hey. Oh, the King James says perfect soundness. The Hebrew, the Greek, by the way, you may ask me, why I not saying the Greek? Because I can't pronounce it. It's a hard Greek word, you know, but it means it's a double word. It's like perfect, perfect. You look at him once, perfect. You look again, perfect. That's what God does. Some people, the first time they're perfect, after a few minutes, no, not perfect. This time, perfect, perfect. Watch him after one year, perfect, perfect. Anybody in this place who wants to have a ministry of healing which will showcase the omnipotent standard of my God. Hey! Somebody say, Perfect, perfect. I love it, I love it. I love. You know, I was looking for a family and I found them. Pramin, I love you there, brother. Perfect, perfect. Now, what is the meaning of that word in Greek? Of an unimpaired condition of the body in which all its members are healthy and fit for use. Now, can I ask, I'm not saying tomorrow... You should, start, you should start seeing this. But can I at least ask you, can you accept the omnipotence of God in the area of healing when Jesus does it? It is better than any physician. It is better than any magician. It's better than any witch doctor. My God is a God of perfect healing. If you believe that anybody wants to walk in that anointing, make a sound of prophetic Release. Hallelujah. It'll be such that you'll pray for somebody and then 
because your name of Jesus came and the explosion of that name, the neighboring organs that you didn't pray for will get healed. Come on. You prayed for the eyes, but the tongue got healed. Can I get somebody who believes? Is there anything too hard for my God? Somebody who knows this language? Oh, come on. I'm believing God for it. Perfect. So I, I love doubles in the Bible. I love doubles. The second place where you find the double is in the ministry of Paul. Uh, Acts 19.11. Acts 19.11. I love it. Acts 19. And God was doing extraordinary miracles. You know what that? It's a bit too much for me. The word miracle means extraordinary. So it simply means God was doing extraordinary, extraordinary. Double extraordinary. When God heals, it will be double. So church, I'm sensing the grip of a prophetic seizure in my spirit as I announce this to the ends of the earth. Is anybody that can believe that God's omnipotence, all-powerful, can be revealed through the greatest, highest standard of healing ever done? Yeah. Yeah. You know... I'm a conference preacher. I'm a preacher for, you know, Bible colleges. So if I were to say this in an African or Indian Bible college setting, I tell you, we would have a report of so many chairs broken. But don't do that now. But at least now, if you believe that God is able, is omnipotent, is able to do this, I want some of you to just at least get up from that place that you think it's permanent <laughs> and move around, hug somebody, give high fives to somebody and say, my God's healing is the highest. Come on, do something, do something. Oh, get ready, get ready, get ready. God is able. God is able. Hallelujah. I said my God is able. He is the omnipotent God. Hallelujah. All powerful God. Amen. Now let me come to the second part. I don't, I don't even know I can complete today. The second place where this is found. Are you ready? It's found in Jeremiah 32, 17 and 27. Jeremiah 17, 27. No, no, Jeremiah 32, 20, 17. 32, 17, I'm sorry. Jeremiah 32, 17. Oh, Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm, nothing Oh, you didn't hear that? Oh, you didn't hear that? Why do you think nothing is too hard for my God? Because his omnipotence is called creative omnipotence. He is a creator God. There is nobody who can create like he or nobody will create. He's the only creator. So this omnipotence is called creation or creative omnipotence. But my God is not just a creative omnipotent, is also sustaining omnipotent. Meaning that which he creates, he can hold it. He can support it. The Bible says nothing is lost. And I want you to know he holds all things together by his word. Do you believe my God 
is omnipotent as a creator omnipotent. He can create everything. He created the heavens and the earth by his power and by his outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for my God. Amen. Now let me say this. This is happening. The first one was to do with life. But this one has to do with property. God is telling Jeremiah to buy a property in the most un supportive, unbecoming situation. The Babylonians are about to take over the country. And God says, this is a time to buy. It doesn't make sense. But God says, against all odds, properties are going to be bought. So I'm going to declare today, do you believe in the area of provisions? No, 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 no. Do you believe in the area of big provision? Nothing is too hard for my God if you believe that. Your bank balance might not be favorable. Situation might be against it. But today, do you believe the God who creates everything has the power to provide for you in a supernatural manner? Yes. Nothing is too hard for the Lord in the area of properties. I just want you to know, as I said, there were a few things that were happening. And this morning, I was handed over a gift that consisted of two gifts in it. Um, and, but I written a few, sometimes back, exactly the date connected to this movement. And that was September 15 that I written it down. And today is the date. And the gift was an announcement of it with prophetic symbolism. There are two gifts. I don't want to, I don't know if I can mention, both gifts are very highly significant. So the first gift is a pen. So it's a beautiful pen. And I normally don't wear a pen uh, because I feel, you know, I can't even carry my own weight. <laughs> <laughs> but I carried this pen today. It's a beautiful pen. But this was given as a prophetic word for me sometimes back. You know, it's an announcement that in the days to come, contracts will be signed. Amen. Properties will be bought including for our church. Amen. We are going to sign houses, cancel kind of mortgages by signing off. And I, as I stand here, as I sit here, I'm representing the church here, declaring, is anything too hard? Is anything too hard for the Lord? If you believe... Nothing is too hard for the Lord in providing. Can you make a statement as a, come on. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Now let me make this very clear. And then this morning, very unusual, I get a leading to call one of our elders of the church and ask him to pray over me on the phone, which I don't think I've done before. Because I felt strongly a face appearing. And then after prayer, he sends me a message. And the message is from Haggai. And Haggai 2.18. Can you read that? And I want you to praise the Lord because God is able. Consider from this day onward. From the 24th day of the ninth month since the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Consider, next word. From this day onwards, from this day onwards, I will bless you. Now let me ask you, do you believe this God who created everything can supply needs of yours in manner? It will be too wonderful for you, but God says it's easy for me. Now let me ask you, these are people in this church who can believe God for millions. Come on. If God's plan for your life is millions, you say it's too wonderful. God says is anything too wonderful for me? 
in the area of finance because I created everything out of nothing. If you believe that's where the Lord is going to lead you into prayer, I pray yes in the name of Jesus. You'll have to ask the Holy Spirit how to help you in this area of prayer because this is God's omnipotence when it comes to, you know, finance. Number three, God's omnipotence when it comes to people. How many of you know sometimes the biggest block to our lives are people around us? Don't look at your neighbor. <laughs> Husbands feel that, wives feel that, children feel that, you know, pastors sometimes feel that, you know, sometimes our national leaders are a problem. We all feel that, that people are the problem. Now, some of you are saying, you know, if it, was for, if it wasn't for this person, I would have been somewhere else, Pastor. It's that person who's holding me back. And I'm going to say, I'm going to declare God's omnipotence in the area of relationship. Amen. Amen. Oh, you didn't hear that. I'm telling you, God is omnipotent in the area of relationship. Can you believe him today? Yes. Your children, your family, people around you, relatives, the people that are causing you headache, I want you to get this into your heart. You know, Jeremiah 32, God's response to Jeremiah and verse number 27. And I want some of you who are praying in this area to make a mighty sound. Jeremiah uh, uh, 32, 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Hallelujah. Is there anything? That means the people that you are praying about are, I am the Lord over them. I can control their hearts. I can change all flesh. If you believe that, can you? Come on, church. Now, I want some of you to get this into your heart and give a response, not because I'm provoking you, just because you know your God is able. Can you give a Lord a praise? God of all flesh. Leaders are in his hands. Your people that you're worried about are in his hands. You have to accept that. You'll have to believe him for that. He's a God of... Is anything too hard for me? Now let me release the three items. Number one, is a God of time and matter. Is anything too hard for him? Number two, is a God who creates everything. And he can release properties and projects. Is anything too hard for him? Number three, the Lord who controls every flesh. That means he can change anybody. And is anything too hard for him? Now as a response, can you give a response of faith in this God? Come on. You can, come on, give the Lord the best response of faith. Is anything too hard for him? Now, let me say another. The second expression, and I'll finish soon. The second expression related to the omnipotence of God in the Bible is found in this expression. It's found in this expression, the hand of the Lord. I want to bring two or three passages and we'll be done for today. As I said, while doing the dedication, the Lord gave, through somebody, uh, the dream about Esther 2.18. Esther 2.18. I want some of you to receive it. You know, one of the person that is walking with me in terms of financial advice is David. David, would you please stand up if you're here, David? You know, he's, he's working with me in areas. He's my advisor. <laughs> I want to take this for the church, hand of the Lord. So what is Esther 2? Why did God give that in a dream? Esther 2.18. Let's read that today. Now, verse number 17 onwards. Taisa, do you want to get up? People, you know, young girls, you know, because Esther means, I, I think it's more feminine. I said, okay, some women take it up. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm, I'm holding it back because I said women. I would have jumped off. The king loved Esther 
more than all the women, and she won grace and favor. Now, your greatest property, an uh, asset, is grace and favor. Can somebody say, you know, more than your makeup and cosmetics, I'm not against it. Please do whatever you want. Don't overdo though. Just do it. But more than anything else, your greatest beauty, that means when you walk with favor and grace in the king's sight, oh, come on, he will not look at your earring. He will say, I love her. I love her because of favor and grace on you. Some of you are going to see this in business areas. You're not going to be recognized. You don't have to even, you know, allure and flirt and do all kinds of things. You just have to take the favor and grace of God and walk to the place. And the king said, oh, she's more beautiful. Oh, sh Can somebody understand the anointing of favor and grace? Can you? If anybody believes your greatest reward, your greatest asset in life is God's favor and God's grace, can you shout a hallelujah in the house? God's favor and grace. Hey. The people recognize you. That's all what she had. Recently, a prophet almost rebuking me. It was kind of a rebuke. Lirin always reminds me when I'm trying to ignore, you know, forget it. He says that prophet said that over you. You know what he said? He said to me, the lion does not need cosmetics. <laughs> I was stunned. I, I'm still processing it. The lion does not need cosmetics. I have never seen a lion going to a saloon and saying, fix my hair. The lion by virtue of being a lion. And he said, don't compare to any ministry. You are called to be a lion. You don't need extra fittings. <laughs> And let me tell you, my anointing is grace and favor. So women and men, if you believe this is what's going to open doors for you, give you blessing, can you shout, put your hands together, give a Lord favor. Hey, come on, somebody say yes. Because I am declaring this as loud as I can. Some of my sisters standing here, some of my brothers standing here will become advisors to nation, national leaders and rulers in the days to come because of grace and favor upon you. If you believe. Yes. So attraction is based on this factor. Now what happened? Next word. Next word. So the king gave a great feast for all his... Who is giving? King. Who is giving? King. For all his servants, servants. It was Esther's... Now, why would the king give a feast and call it Esther's feast? Those kings are very proud kings in the, old, in the ancient times. The Iranian, Persian kings. They will not share the glory with anybody. But the king says, I will pay for it. I will get the wine and everything needed. But you have it. It's under your name. This is what favor and grace will do. Somebody else will pay for it. And it will be in your name. Get ready for such transactions to happen in the name. Oh, come. On the count of three, if anybody can believe, you're going to have Esther feast. You're going to have a feast under your name because God is releasing that. Can you shout a hallelujah in the house? Hey, I feel like preaching. It's called the Esther's face. Don't sit down because I'm completing it. That line, prophetic, because it came in a dream. Next word. And it is also grand remission of taxes. It says in the original, he caused them to rest. The moment Esther anointing comes, some of you are going to enter that season. Because the key word in Esther is for such a time as this. You're entering that season. God says the first sign of that, God will cause them to rest. The word is rest there, which some translations says remission of taxes. Meaning, you will have a season of resting. 
and I declare over somebody today, Esther's feast. Or somebody say, receive it. I want some of you to act as if we are in an international conference where you open your mouth and say, receive it. I receive it. A sea, it's, God is calling it Esther's feast, meaning a season of rest. A season of rest. Season of rest. So David, even when you get involved in international affairs, God is going to release rest into the system. You don't have to worry about it. You know, you don't have to lose hair on it. It'll be done. And the next thing, next thing, I love it. And gave gifts with royal generosity. Ha. Ah. And King James. King James. I love it. Then the king made a great feast according to the status of the king. God says, I want to honor Esther, but she will carry my status. Some of you are going to become the status carriers of who your God is. Now, if, you, if I was sitting there or standing there, I would have latched on to it. Meaning, when people see me, they will know the status of my God. When they see my blessing, they will know the status of my God. When they see the property, they will see the status of my God. If anybody can believe that, can you make this as a personal? No, you didn't hear it. I'm giving an opportunity to release, receive this. This church building will carry the status of our God. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah in the house. He will carry the status of the king. It's called, I don't know why I'm hearing this. You put your name there and say, Esther's feast has come because of grace and favor. Come on. Put your name there. Has come. But who is preparing it? The, somebody else is doing it and you are getting it in your name. And let me tell you, that's all what happened in Christianity. Jesus paid the price and you get the benefit of it. Everything that you enjoy today is because of Jesus paying the price. If you believe that, And that's the reason the Bible says, come to his throne to receive grace and favor. That's what he gives. So the word there, why did I use this? The word, therefore, state of the king, in the, is the Hebrew word, the hand of the king. They believe it's prophetic. So God wants to bless you according to his hand size. I'm not going to preach until I see some people who are excited about it. Hey, hallelujah. Pastor Dale, can you give me a shake hand, Pastor? And please, don't say this to everybody, please. People watching me. Put your hand. Ah, huh, not bad. Amen. Not bad. Let me see. One and a half. Yeah. If I want to get something, I would like to get it from his hand. <laughs> because it's bigger than my hand. But today I'm prophesying over somebody. God wants to bless you according to his hand. Hallelujah. Hey, anybody in this church who want to make it a prof I receive it in the name of Jesus. So I asked the Lord, How, what is the size of your hand, God? Your hand, size of your hand. The size of your hand. And by the way, anybody rich here, don't be ashamed, afraid. Don't, don't hide. Richer than me. Many. So if I want to get something, I want to get it from somebody rich. So today morning, my, my, my you know, he's, he has now become my, what do you call, resident or what do you call, regular dreamer for me, you know, both of them. But recently, Lirin is giving me almost every day, and he said, I saw a dream in which Auntie Molly comes and says to them, because we are conducting a school of ministry for many people. We have a building. And while they were sitting there, Auntie Molly came and said, we just got a check. 
And, you know, I know that's the way Molly Auntie speaks. She will not tell the number, but she gave a cryptic message. You know, it was according to what Bill Gates would have given. So when I'm hearing that, the Lord gives me a dream or reminds me of a dream where it says, it's not even according to Bill Gates. It's according to his hand. Church, are you happy to receive things from this hand? Somebody is stomping their feet. I want some of you more to do that because we are telling the devil blessings are under our feet in the name of Jesus Christ. According. Hey, I can dream in the days to come for hospitals in Africa, hospitals in India. I can dream. According. So I want to know his hand. Pastor Dale. I know when you give, I love your hand, but today, please, excuse me, Pastor. I have to talk about his hand. Ah, anybody wants to receive it? This is your, uh, maybe the only chance you can receive it for this moment because things are happening in the moment. You have reached the Kairos moment. Hallelujah. What is the hand of God? Isaiah 40, verse number 12. Daughter, receive. I saw your face as well. Amen. Isaiah 40, 12. Oh, hallelujah. What is his hand? I'm seeing myself there. Ah, he has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand. That means you can take the Pacific Ocean and the Arabic Ocean and all ocean. And if this God opens his hand to bless you. And he has marked of the heavens with a span. So all it took for God, a span in Hebrew is this much from here to here. So God says, when I measured the heavens that you call 14 billion light years, come on, the galaxies upon galaxies, all it took for me was, oh, that's, that's the Milky Way and everything, billions of stars. That's me. I measured. Now, Pastor Dale, that's the hand. He's saying, how can you compare me to the idols? I am the God who measured the whole universe with my hand. Just like this. Let me tell you, I heard a voice in my spirit. This God is about to open his hand for your sake. I heard Legion say this at the second song. Numbers, I think, what is the numbers? 21, I think. Uh, 21, 11. And he says, God says, my hand is not shortened. Moses is asking God, how can I give food for these people? Meat. He says, God, you said for one month. I can't even think. If all the fishes in the ocean is taken and all the birds give, be given, how can? God said, now you will see that my hand is not small. They will eat for one month and they will over th throw up too much to eat. Moses, the great man of God, is calculating. Full ocean fish, not enough. For one month, God said, you'll see my hand that can provide for you. But let me finish here by one psalm, one verse, and then we'll pray. Psalm 146, I think. 146. I want some of you, anybody to go there. Psalm 146. And I want you to rejoice today. Um, yeah. Psalm 145, 16. I want you to rejoice as we read this. 145, 16. The Lord is going to do according to his hand. You open your hand. You satisfy the desire of every living thing. I want to declare 
the omnipotence of my God. He can provide for everybody when he opens his hand. And today he's opening his hand towards you. Can you believe? One more. It's not just opening your hand and giving you things, but how is he giving it to you? 104, Psalm 104, verse number 28. And I want some of you to move as we start to pray. Big. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they're filled with he can give you, every one of you, yes. good things. Yes. It's Esther's banquet day. Yes. And what made you qualified? Grace and favor. Yes. Come on, church. Do you want to receive the hand of God in your life? I want you to do something. You know, don't hold yourself back. No need for inhibition or apprehension. If you believe God's omnipotence can express things in your life in a manner that you can't even comprehend, I wanted to move out, do something with a sign. God, I don't even understand it, but I believe nothing is too hard for my God. David, representing the next season, would you please come forward? May God give grace to you. Move forward, move forward. Do something that you may not do normally. Because I'm hearing again and again. I thank God where is Lijo's family. I can hear this word. It is Esther's banquet day. Where the king is going to stretch his hand. Somebody else will work on your behalf. And what is your asset? Oh, it's favor and grace. That's all. And the word grace, favor there is asset. My favorite word, mercy. The Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. I declare the omnipotence of God over life and over provision. If you can receive it, next few minutes, maybe a few seconds, open your mouth, do something which will announce your arrival at the king's courtyard into the king's palace to receive something according to the hand of the king. Make your announcement now by faith. Don't be, you know, holding back even your voice because God says, I brought you for such a time as this. Lift up your voice. I'm believing God for projects. I'm believing God because it was said to me from this day onwards, God is going to do something mighty. Come on. Believe him, believe him, believe him, believe him. Keep praying. Oh, Rabaka. Tamara, you were on my heart. Tamara, you are my heart. So receive it, receive it. Just keep praying, just keep praying. Your pastor is going to turn off the mic. It is your time. Is a word called confession, meaning you respond, you say what God said. That's the word confession. And the Bible calls Jesus Christ a high priest of our confession, meaning if God said something, I want you to open your mouth and repeat that, but make it personal. That's called confession. Confession. Oh, it's not coming out as yet. Some of you are afraid of what people might think, but this is such a time as this. Favor is coming upon you. The king's banquet, it's going to be a banquet in your name where people can come and eat. Others are going to be blessed through you. There are going to be tables where people of your family are going to be blessed in the name of Jesus. Can you receive it in the name of the Lord? Pray, pray. Oh, pray, pray, pray. Speak it out. So at least catch hold of one word that I said. I want you to speak it out. Speak it out. Confession. Oh, Rabbi Kashan. And Jesus said, if you confess me among men, I will confess you among the angels. 
That means your word of confession today is carried into heaven. Can you say, God's favor is upon me. God's mercy is upon me. Because of that, I am blessed. I can receive things from the hand of the king. Come on, hallelujah. Pray, 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 pray. pray, pray, pray. Yes. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You're entering the Kairos time of God. Matter will be created. Organs will be changed. In the name of Jesus, I declare perfect health anointing. I declare extraordinary, extraordinary. In the name of Jesus. According to the status of the king. According to the status of the king. According to his riches in glory. Let it be provided. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. I love you, Jesus, for this beautiful time. Lord, I know I have to finish here, but your people will go back home. May the Holy Spirit carry this word. One thing we know, there's nothing too hard for our God. In the area of time and matter, he is still God. In the area of preparing, providing, and properties, projects, is still the God of creation. In the area of touching people connected to us, is a God of all flesh. Amen. Nothing is too hard for our God. Thank you, Lord, it's been done. Bless your people. I declare my God to be the omnipotent God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And everybody give, not just an amen, but an amen that carries every fiber of your being. Come on. Yeah.